Okay, so I have a question here. I expect this won't get the top vote. It did, actually. But perhaps something you could address at some point. As someone with trauma and scant human connection as a result, animals become my family. It's unconditional love, which of course is so soothing for someone with CPTSD. Unfortunately, with pets comes inevitable crushing heartbreak when their lifespan is less than ours. So the deep attachment wound comes up so badly that ties into the parent-child dynamic we have with them. Would welcome your thoughts and insights on this. And someone, as someone who has had to euthanize three beloved pets, I'd welcome guidance or thoughts on helping understand that loss and connection so it isn't so debilitating and crushing. Thanks for any insight you may have on this, whether now or later. I do have some insight for you. Animals are, are wonderful. Um, and yes, uh, soothing for people with CPTSD, I'm sure. Um, what they offer is unconditional love, as you say. They also offer a very useful model for being in the moment. So when you're entrained into a lifestyle with a pet, with an animal, they mirror you and you mirror them. They're very moment focused. They're very now and today focused because they can't do more than that. They don't have the cognitive capacity or the imaginative capabilities to ruminate on the past or, or dream of, you know, um, highly nuanced, complicated ideas of the future. So it's good having animals around you, but yes, they do have a shorter lifespan uh, than human beings do. So if you have a lot of animals around you, um, as the years become decades, uh, you will see uh, your beloved uh, four-legged friends or winged friends um, age and die. Um, where in that sense, we're like the, uh, the vampires in the novels who become reclusive because they can't take the pain anymore of uh, falling in love with mortals and watching them age and die whilst they remain the same age. I always think of um, Khalil Gibran when I think about this subject. And uh, he wrote some nice poetry in a book that is called The Prophet. And one of those aphorisms, poems in there is called On Pain. And he makes the point that the amount of pain and suffering that we can feel in our grief for someone is directly proportionate to how much love and how much of an attachment we had to that person or uh, in this case, that animal, um, that object of, of our love and that everything in life does come at a price. It's cowardly to withdraw from love. It's cowardly to be reclusive and to not experience love just because you're afraid of the pain that will inevitably come when that person leaves, the relationship dissolves or they die, or in the case of an animal, they, they age and, and die. And you have to, they become sick, you have to uh, uh, euthanize them, as, as, as you said, um, as a, you know, a humanitarian gesture because they're, they're suffering and they're not gonna get better. So I would say what this requires is a kind of a philosophy. So you have to have a philosophy for, and a philosophical approach for loving and caring for animals that includes having the muscular capacity to love them whilst they're alive. And then as much as you love them whilst they're alive, as the heart beats in, so it beats out. As your lungs breathe in, so they breathe out. As the tide comes in, so it goes out. Just as much of a capacity to grieve, just as much of a muscular, strong, courageous ca capacity to grieve for them and to be okay with the sadness and to face the sadness. These things um, I've found in my own life are um, much, much, much easier to live with when you shift your, there's like a consciousness shift from going, okay, there's pain and I don't like pain and I don't want to experience pain. So I'm going to have like a muscular, no, like a resist. I'm going to resist. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to push away from it as opposed to relaxing and saying, there is pain and there is sadness and there is loss. Let it, let it come. It's a welcome guest. It can stay here. I am, I've said this to myself and it's really massively helped and situations where I thought I'd be grieving for months. I'm not saying that this will always be the case, but for me personally, recently, I looked at a certain situation. I was like, I am going to be in the hurt locker for about three months with this one. 
So, okay, Richard, how are you going to do this? It's like, okay, I'm a big boy and I can take it. I will now be sad. I'm going to be sad and I'm not going to fight it and I'm not going to run from it. I'm going to grieve and I'm going to be sad and I'm going to be sad every day. And I imagine it's going to take about three months. And I was really sad and I grieved and I permitted myself to grieve and I gave myself the space and I accepted and I sat with the emotion and I said, okay, this is day one. This is going to be me for a while. It's not going to kill me. It's uncomfortable. It's not my favorite thing, but I'll be okay. And I know why this is happening and I know why this is necessary. And I know the the costs and the benefits and I, I know why I'm here. It's all righteous. It's all good. And actually in that scenario, I think because I bravely uh, um, accepted that I was going to be in pain for a long period of time, it actually inside of a week, it kind of dissipated and not in a, you can suppress these feelings, you can numb them out and you can push them down and then you can sublimate them and you can somaticize them and they can come up in other weird pl places and you can become depressed or you can develop like weird twitches or OCD or whatever. This one, it just passed. It passed through me. It happened. I felt it. I didn't run from it. I accepted it. And I said, I'm going to be sad. And then I was sad. And when I was sad, I said, I am sad. I didn't say, I'm not sad. I'm okay today. I can get through this. Everything's going to be okay because I'm looking forward to this or I'm doing that and trying to distract myself. I just said, wow, wow, I am really fucking sad. And then in my own head, I was like, why are you sad? Well, I'm sad because I've lost this and that means this and that means this. And I'm never going to have that again. And that whole situation, that whole experience, that whole potential timeline with that person has died. So that person is is dying, uh, they're, they're alive, but that in my life, they were, they were fading from my life. And so they, they were in my life, they were, they were atrophying, they were dying away. And that was one level of pain. And then there was the relationship and everything that came with that relationship and that atrophied and that was dying off. And I was like, wow, I'm losing a couple of things here that are of big value to me. This really sucks. It's going to take time. And it passed as I say, within a week, and I expect it to be about three months. I'm not saying that this method will accelerate uh, the grieving process. It certainly won't elongate it. Well, I don't know, maybe I can say I'll accelerate it. Because if you do the opposite, if you go into denial and you say, I don't want to feel this and I'm not going to feel this, or you say, I'm not in pain, I'm not sad, I'm not angry, I'm not full of grief, I'm not angry with the person for dying. I'm not angry with the person for making me feel like I've been abandoned or whatever, whatever it is, you just accept it all. So you either accept it or you deny it. If you deny it, it's definitely going to take longer. So if you accept it, it's probably too bold to say, oh, that accelerates the grieving process. But well, the, the other one definitely makes it longer. So this one, is probably going to be the shortest route possible. And remember that like sadness isn't bad. Grieving isn't bad. This is how we do honor to the people and the places, even the relationships, the scenarios that we loved and to the animals that we loved and all the happiness that that uh, person or that animal has brought to you in your life. And you know, you learn their personality and you learn what they like and what they don't like and they make you laugh or they annoy you sometimes and you have a whole relationship. I've never lived with uh, my own uh, pet for um, uh, the lifetime of an animal, never, but I've lived with uh, other people's dogs for like months or years. And I can see even after, I think the longest was with an ex-girlfriend and I think it was uh, on and off for three years. And um, when we split up, I, I cried for her and I cried for the relationship, but she wasn't very nice to me. I cried a lot more for the dog because I was like, wow, I'm never going to see that dog again. Jesus, and he was really cool. She wasn't cool, man. He was a, he was a better person than she was by quite, <laughs> by quite a fucking long way. Like he was a really cool guy and she wasn't. And I grieved for that. And that was only after... As I say, it was three years, but we weren't together the whole time. So it was probably two and a half. So I can't imagine, uh, well, I can imagine, but it's hard. You you take an animal on perhaps as a rescue 
um, when they're very young, when they're a puppy, when they're a kitten, when they're, when they're very, very young. And then you watch them grow and you take care of them. And it could be 10, 15 years of your life and theirs before they pass away. So I imagine that's, um, that's difficult. That's a lot of bonding. That's a lot of attachment. But it is necessary that you let them go. It is necessary that you honor them in that way. And your grief and your sadness and your tears are, are part of that. And we have to accept the whole thing. Well, we don't have to. It's better if you accept the whole thing. It's better if you accept the sadness and the tears and the grief and uh, realize that that is still a part of you showing them love. Um, I hope that that helps. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I look forward to speaking to you on the next video. Cheers. Okay, folks, the new course, uh, Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse, is out now. And if you're interested in finding out more about that, please click the link below.